Hello there YouTube. If you're watching this, then there's a good chance that you got to my channel through two different means. Either you are an avid reader and found my channel through Booktube and uh, bookish content. Or you're a gamer and you found my channel through uh, the occasional gaming video, uh, my uh, Twitch streams, uh, the one somewhat popular video on Movie Bob I did, uh, or through the uh, the Discord that's, uh, uh, that I chat on, which is often either bookish content or gaming content. And um, to both groups, I say, this is why you should be playing D&D. &D. Dungeons and Dragons. It is the bridge between hobbies, I find. Um, whereas... I, I like to read, and I like to play games. D&D um, &D is the one hobby that takes all of these elements and smushes them together. It also adds in that social element that is so often missing from both reading, which is a very solitary activity, and gaming, which, whilst you can play multiplayer games, is also often quite solitary. <coughs> Excuse me. You can't play D&D &D on your own. But you can engage in D&D &D as a universe on your own. You see, there are multiple D&D &D books I have here. One of the Dragonlance books. This is uh, uh, Autumn, uh, Dragons of Autumn Twilight by Margaret Wise and Tracy Hickman. I have the uh, whole Dragonlance series on my shelf. Uh, there's also the Forgotten Realms books. Um, the most famous probably being the Dritz Trilogy, uh, though there's others. Um, there are plenty of books set in these universes, and you'll find a very traditional sword and sorcery high fantasy affair. Something that doesn't you know, break any boundaries, doesn't push the, uh, the envelope too much, but uh, is generally quite enjoyable and entertaining. It's a bit tropey, but tropes are not necessarily a bad thing. But if you're not one for reading, maybe you play video games. Well, D&D has you covered here. Uh, this is a remaster of uh, Planescape Torment and Icewind Dale. These are two fantastic games um, that uh, were popular on the, uh, the PC uh, when they first came out, but um, had a niche audience, and they've since had a remaster on pretty much every, uh, every major system. They're not the only ones, though. There's also the Baldur's Gate series and the Neverwinter Nights series and others on top of that. Um, it is rare to find someone who hasn't played a game that's based off D&D. Uh, even, uh, even if you've not played a D&D game, you've probably played a game that uses D&D mechanics. For example, Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic is heavily based off the D20 D&D system, only with Star Wars thrown over the top. Um, if you play tabletop gaming, uh, you're likely familiar with Magic the Gathering. And these cards uh, will be a uh, staple in your uh, your hobby collection. Well, Magic the Gathering is made by the same company that makes D&D. &D, and not only is the, uh, is the game quite compatible with D&D, &D, um, it is actively getting crossovers now. Uh, there have been multiple D&D &D books with Magic the Gathering content in them to allow you to play a Magic the Gathering style character from one of their planes in a D&D &D game. But not only that, now D&D, &D, Forgotten Realms specifically, the, the largest and uh, most popular D&D &D setting is getting a Magic the Gathering card set. So there is way more crossover than anyone could have imagined. Um, they are now officially the same universe on a level they never were before. Um, that's not the only card game, of course. Uh, you may uh, you may play this one, or may be familiar with this one. This is a little bit more niche. Uh, that is Legend of the Five Rings, and is also um, th theoretically set in the same uh, universe. Rokugan um, is uh, a potential plane you could set a D and D game in. And there was a Legend of the Five Rings tabletop role-playing game, which was very similar to D&D, &D, though it had a few twists and uh, changes to it. Uh, it would be 
very possible to mix and match. The world of Karatur is heavily based off Rokugan, um, and that was included in 3rd edition D&D as well as 4th edition D&D. Uh, though it's not had a supplement in 5th edition as far as I'm aware, that doesn't mean you can't set something in the setting, it just means there isn't a book detailing that setting. You can use whatever setting you like for D&D. But, whilst all of these connections are nice, why should you specifically play D&D? Well, I think, for me, Dungeons & Dragons has... Um, it, not just Dungeons & Dragons as well, role-playing in general. Um, games like World of Darkness and Shadowrun are also some of my favourites. Um, I actually prefer playing them to D&D most of the time, because I find D&D, whilst it's the big one that everyone knows... It's rarely the best game for a specific storyline. Um, but if you're interested in fantasy, as most people are, uh, tend to be, um, D&D does that very, very well. Most people who are likely to be watching these videos tend to be. I've noticed a big, big fantasy um, uh, bent to BookTube when it comes to which books are being, uh, being read and uh, which franchises are people's favourites. And even amongst um, amongst geeks in general, uh, fantasy TV has taken off more than any uh, than it ever has before. And fantasy based video games have always been popular. Um, science fiction, to a lesser extent, uh, can be done in D and D. There is D twenty Modern, uh, which is a variant of D and D that allows you to play uh, sci fi games. But you don't even need to use that. You can just include futuristic weapons in a D and D game, and it works perfectly. Um, it, it can fit just as well as uh, as magic can, so you can do that quite comfortably. Um, but why you should be playing D and D is that it will give you an appreciation for the various parts of your hobby that you haven't had before, and it might bridge those hobbies so that if you only engage in one of them, you might start engaging in the others. Um, if you're only really a reader, and you're just you're just a bookish person who enjoys stories. Well, D&D has you covered. You can engage in a story, you can build your character, you can have your backstory, you can practice writing if you if you enjoy writing. Uh, you can write up your backstory, you can help forge a storyline, talk to characters, and effectively what you have is improv, on-the-spot, creative writing. Um, a kind of a mix between um, amateur theatre and collective uh, and collective writing. It, it's a fantastic little hobby that you can do. And if you've got the right GM who focuses that, uh, that game towards a story-driven encounter where there's more conversation and more um, interaction between characters and less walking around in a dungeon killing goblins and stealing their boots, then you can really enjoy that. But if, alternatively, you are a gamer who enjoys playing video games and you don't really care too much about story, though you could easily be a story-driven video game fan, uh, but if you're playing a, a game because you like the action of the game, you like going in and having the agency to decide when you swing your sword and what you swing it at, well D&D has you covered there. Admittedly you don't have a screen with, uh, with the action shown on the screen for you, uh, you have to use your imagination. But you have way, way more agency than you ever could in a video game. Um, if you can imagine it and you've got a GM worth their, their, their salt, um, they can make a ruling that will allow you to at least try it. If you've got something in your head that you want to try, the game engine might not allow it on a video game, but there is nothing to stop your imagination and the mechanics being twisted to allow you to attempt to do it. Um, you could be fighting some creature where you need to um, destroy the, you know, the, the gem in, in, in the center of its face to, uh, uh, to, to stop it. Um, some kind of goal. In the video game, you've just got to hack at it until it bends down and you know, starts, uh, starts shaking and you know, allows its weak point to be shown. Then you can walk up and smack the weak point. Why do you have to do it that way? Why can't you switch to a ranged weapon and attack it from um, a safe distance? Uh, why can't you uh, Why can't you scale the wall uh, and uh, swing down onto it so that you're able to attack it from there? Why can't you sneak around the back, climb up its back, and smash it with with uh, a hammer or something? 
all of those things are things that you could suggest doing, and a decent GM will come up with in-game, on-the-spot rules for how to do those things. This is why D&D ends up becoming such a uh, an entrenched hobby for so many people, why role-playing in general becomes such an entrenched hobby, because they realise that the only real limitations are the limitations of your imagination and the imagination of your GM. Once you've got those things in place, you can try almost anything. And um, with uh, with a fairly short, short amount of time, you'll come to realise that the rules for D&D are merely guidelines to facilitate this mix of uh, gaming mechanics, uh, dice rolling, tactical manoeuvring, and amateur theatre, which creates this beautiful mix of all the elements that I love from video games, from tactics, uh, from the strategy of things like card games, uh, to the character-driven story elements of a decent novel. All of these can be present in a single D&D game. And that's why you should be playing D&D. Now, I made this video because I realised something. I spend a lot of time playing D&D and uh, role-playing games in general, and I want to talk about them in more depth. Uh, you'll notice that this video had a different thumbnail to some of my others, and that's intentional because I'm going to be making more like this. I'm going to go through the player's handbook, I'm going to go through other uh, supplements, and we're going to discuss uh, the different uh, the different storylines that are present in the pre-written adventures. We're going to discuss um, we're going to discuss the best builds for characters. We're going to discuss um, the different races and different classes and which ones are better. Maybe even do you know a top uh, a top list or a tier list depending on uh, on how it all goes. But I I think this is going to be an interesting area to discuss, and I can easily tie this back into other content I want to make. I've been wanting to talk about video games for a long time, and it would be very easy to play D and D or other role play based video games and tie them in. And I've been meaning to go back and read both the Dragonlance and the Forgotten Realms books for a long time. So being able to talk about them and tie it back in to both the booktube stuff that I'm talking about and tie it into the D&D stuff that I'm talking about would be fantastic. But it's not just that, it works both ways. Um, if I'm playing a video game, I can use that video game to inspire D&D content. A great example of this is, even though I'm not a particular fan of the game, the game Bloodborne has some really, really iconic weapons. So th those weapons can inspire in a, a fantastic way. A good example is the, the Whirly Gig, um, I think it's called. It's basically a giant saw blade, like a circular saw blade that rotates on a huge like Dane Axe style handle. I'm including that in my D&D game. I'm statting that up as an Artificer weapon. Now, the Artificer is a class in D&D that uses a mixture of magic and steampunk technology to create uh, wacky inventions. So the idea of them making a circular buzzsaw on the end of a Dane axe um, that they can then swing around as a weapon where the blades are constantly spinning, that is a fantastic idea for a rare specialist weapon. So I'm going to treat that as a rare magic weapon. It won't necessarily do magic damage, but it'll do increased damage because it's a big circular cutting saw. Maybe it'll do armor piercing damage. I haven't decided, but I want to include it because it's cool. Same with the uh, uh, with the, um, uh, the 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 iconic blade from Bloodborne. Um, I believe it's uh, the, uh, uh, the the saw glaive or something like that, or saw cleaver, uh, whatever it's called. Uh, the one where it's um, it's a, a large uh, sort of semicircular handle and a big cleaver blade, and then that can snap forwards into a glaive. That's fantastic. That's basically um, a big cleaver that can become a glaive as a free action. That's that's simple to make that into a weapon in D and D. But wouldn't that be so so cool if you can play a game and the GM goes, you know what? Yes, you can have that weapon. Um, let's let's work out what what stats would be in its 
uh, expanded form, it would be the equivalent of a glaive. In its lower form, it's going to be uh, probably equivalent to um, some kind of, of sword or, or maybe an axe or something. Um, and then we, we have it so that you can say when you're expanding it. When you expand it, you've got reach. Uh, when you uh, bring it back down to uh, the smaller side, maybe it, uh, maybe it does a little bit more damage or something. Cause you got more, or maybe it has a plus one to hit because you have more control. That kind of thing. It would be really easy to come up with a fun way to translate that weapon into D&D. And that's video games sorted easily. What about, uh, what about um, novels? What about books? Well, if you think you can take video game stuff and turn that into a, into a concept for D&D, books have that beaten so much. Because yes, you can take something from a video game and easily transfer it over, like a weapon or a skill or something like that. I, I've done that myself with things like Horizon Zero Dawn, where I've taken uh, a lot of the, uh, the the robotic elements and t uh, had golem like creatures similar to the uh, to the dinosaur like robots from um, uh, from Horizon Zero Dawn appear in my D and D games. But when it comes to novels, you can take pretty much anything and just retrofit that into your game and it will it will work beautifully like for example i'm currently uh reading warbreaker by brandon sanderson now if i wanted to i could just strip out the magic system from this and throw it into D. &D. all i would need to do is go right okay um draining color out of something uh can uh, replenish spell slots and um you can uh, you can take breaths from people, uh, and that will give you uh, the ability to uh, animate objects and um, things like that. That can be easily uh, easily done. Like it costs X many breaths to uh, cast this animate object spell, and X many breaths to make to cast this um, raise dead spell in order to represent bringing back one of the lifeless. Um, that would be so easy to do. I could literally turn Warbreaker into a D&D campaign. And I could do it with relative ease. Um, I could do it with almost anything. I, I, I recently was reading the uh, the Powder Mage trilogy. Um, you could take Powder Mages and easily stick them into, um, into a D&D game. You make uh, a Powder Mage is simply a ranger who uses a gun. You give them uh, a couple of custom spells to uh, uh, to be able to ignite powder whenever they can sense it. Uh, you you change the ranger's sensibility to instead of them being able to sense certain creatures at a distance, they can sense black powder at a distance. Uh, you allow them to use black powder as if it was a potion that get that grants them specific boosts to their stats, and you uh, you give them a few bonuses to uh, to using guns in combat. Maybe um, maybe a a bonus similar to the uh, the archer monster from the monster manual, uh, the arcane eye ability, which allows them to either add one d10 to their to hit to represent them bending a bullet around a wall, or one d10 to damage to represent them really accurately hitting something right between the eyes. It's so easy to do it that I've literally just made powder mages playable in D and D, and it took me what two minutes. There is so much that you can do. And you know what? How much fun would it be if you're a fan of the Powder Mage trilogy for you to sit there and go, I'm going to play a Powder Mage in a DD and d game. Even if you only play it for a couple of weeks. Wouldn't that be so much fun to build your own story? Not, not replay the story from the book. Just take your own character, plunk it in a, that universe, or even take the Powder Mage character concept and plunk it in a completely different universe. And just play around with it. You can just be endlessly creative with it. That's the power of D&D. So yeah. You should be playing D&D. And uh, till next time. Thanks for watching. It's been fun.